faces here this morning. Praise God, they can help us eat all that food that's back there. <laughs> you came today on a good day. And you can't leave without food because we got quite a bit. Don't think about the feeling. We know how to eat. What a song to end with. Jesus Christ, the God of all grace. He will think we are under the new covenant of grace, which we are, but he was always the God of grace. He always showed man favor and mercy. He has been since when he made him. So never think that grace just started. Is it more abounding now? Because yes, now we have the Holy Spirit that comes to live within us. So now you have the fullness of God in you, not coming on you any longer. The Old Testament, they had to wait for the Spirit to fall on them, to prophesy and stuff. When Jesus ascended on high to the right hand of the Father, we were endued with Jesus. We were endued with all the power of the cross. We were endued with victory over sin and death and all the power of the enemy. We were filled up with the victory of the cross of Calvary over 2,000 years ago. That's the power you have in you to walk victoriously. You no longer have to be a servant to sin, nor the sin nature. You have the one that overcame the power of sin when he died and rose again. No, you don't, don't, don't make an excuse. We did accountability two weeks ago. Well, that's just human nature. No, your human nature is not your issue anymore because he crushed it at the cross. Hallelujah. Are you thankful today? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Welcome back. I saw all those beautiful pictures in Texas. I figured he wasn't coming back. You missed us. I did. Hallelujah. This is my real family. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. We got family in this house. Amen. Amen. That's the greatest thing about the body of Christ. You know, when I ministered Thursday in Las Vegas, <coughs> they had a taste of all of God's creation there. We had people from different places in the world, different shapes, sizes, nationalities, and colors. And, but you know what? There was one bride. There was one bride in that house Thursday. But that was so awesome to see the different cultures there. But everybody worshipped Jesus. One Lord, one God, one faith. The Holy Spirit unites us. There was a real oneness in there. Every ministry should look like that. When you walk in, you're a born-again believer, you should feel like you walked into your home. Because if you're a Christian, that's why we don't do membership forms here. You belong to Jesus. You're part of the body of Christ. You became a member of His kingdom, not mine. Amen. 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 That's a pastor who asked me the other day about that. I don't have a membership class. There's your membership class. Amen. Welcome Amen. to the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 The word thankful. Like I said, it... When we really realize and we start to take notice and we meditate on His Word, what was really accomplished here, how you can't have a thankful heart after that, i got no idea. Because the deeper you get with Jesus, the more you get to have an intimate relationship, a love affair with the maker of humanity, the one who died and rose again, who loved you so much, He freely laid His life down for you. How that doesn't get you up with a thankful heart? Life's going to happen. Stuff's going to go wrong. Things are going to come. Pains are going to come. There's going to be suffering. There's going to be that stuff. That's life. Nobody walks through this life in a bubble and life doesn't affect you one way or another. And it's going to hurt some days. But the thing is, if you get up with a thankful heart, the friend of a wounded heart will come bring comfort. He'll come bring healing and restoration Hallelujah. to your heart, mind, and soul. Because His love is pure. It's unconditional. It's undefiled. It has no limitations to its power. Because nothing, nothing is greater than the blood of Jesus Christ. When I said that Thursday night to a congregation of all those people, I said, there isn't a sin any of you have committed or could ever commit that that blood is not greater than. It's that powerful. So measure that to all humanity in one moment's time. The power of all that sin got broken. And all you have to do is go to him. That word thankful. A feeling or expressing of thanks or gratitude. To thank. To show. This is the action part. Express appreciation or gratitude. Mm -hmm. When you get up in the morning. 
and your eyes open, he's given you another day here. He hasn't come for you yet. Because your job's not done. Stop trying to get out quickly. Too many Christians want to go so quickly. No, you don't. You got work to do. Stop trying to run from God. Run to Him. Run to Him. Don't run away from Him and ask Him to come back. Because you may have only had 102 years to be here. He may make it 120. You keep pushing him. Anybody ever grumble through a trial and it got a little longer just because? Yeah. Not Claudia, but the rest of us. Yeah. See if I tell you anything. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The beginning of this message should help with your healings today. Because it's a key ingredient of who you are to Jesus. How He sees you and how you should see yourself. Genesis, first chapter, if you have your Bibles. When He gave me the title of this message and He turned me to start studying this, the beginning, He opened me up with this and I stopped in my tracks and I said, okay, thankful. You're going here for what reason? He always has a reason when He tells you something. This should set you free today in who you are and how you see yourself. 26 to 28, Genesis 1. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. You notice the triune God was already busy, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his image, in the image of God. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. Now when you looked in the mirror this morning, or you came, I was doing my hair. <laughs> oh, watch. Did you see his masterpiece? Come quiet again. Did you see this masterpiece, because that's who you are. You were created in the image of God. How could you not be thankful for the way you're made? <coughs> you should have said, I'm your masterpiece. I'm your workmanship. I'm made in your image. Oh God, how blessed am I? I used to grumble at God, especially when I was first saved, and I found out, okay, those 37 years are gone. When I was five years old and hit by a car, I was in a body cast contractions for so long, it compressed my whole body. I was supposed to be about 6'1". Didn't get that. I found out height's not the issue, because there's somebody a whole lot taller than I am. <laughs> well, when you're young and you're playing football, you're playing 6'1", I'm a middle linebacker in the NFL. But that didn't matter to God. He had a plan. So when I quit grumbling the way things happen, you start to see who made you who you made by, who you made for. Every one of you, when you look in the mirror, every now and then when you're getting ready in the morning, just go, Lord, I thank you. I'm your workmanship. I'm your masterpiece. I'm made in your image. How much better does it get than that? Stop looking there and looking for imperfections and start looking at the perfect one who made you just the way you are. So you know who you are in Christ Jesus. So you can see the master at, the, at his best. You are his best. Every one of you is his best. Well, my wife, they, they gave her a thing at work last week. That, that's it, his favorite. But other than that, the rest of us were more on that. But the thing, see what I'm saying, though? You should see yourself every morning before you leave that house, look in the mirror and go, I'm made in God's image. You'll stop judging yourself. You'll, start find, you'll stop finding fault with yourself. You'll stop criticizing, oh, my God, it isn't just right. i got to look just perfect. No, you don't. You're already perfect. You know why? Because you made the image of God. Stop looking and nitpicking on yourself and start being thankful for who oh, made amen. you. you this, you're one of a kind. Every one of you is one of a kind. Nobody else is like you. Oh, nobody, nobody, nobody was made like you. Nobody, because you're individually made for His glory. Amen. That should bring healing to your heart and soul. And then you won't say, just because you looked at TV and that one was a little taller, that one was a little thinner, and this one and that we got to stop comparing ourselves other than to the one who made you. Because you're going to see them all someday. 
I've seen him. I've seen him. I've seen him. I've seen who's made us. And when I was out of my body and I saw him, that's the one who made me. That's the one who died for me. That's the one who loves me beyond measure. I am made in his image. The world may not think I'm all that, but God does, and he thinks you're all that. Amen. So stop looking at yourselves in a negative light. But what did he shine on us this week? No. We had a tent revival out here. It was starting to rain. We all started praying. God parted the heavens over the tent. We didn't get any rain. The light, the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ, let it shine on you so you can see who made you, that you are truly a masterpiece in God's eyes. He doesn't make mistakes. There isn't a soul made on this earth that's a mistake. There isn't one. We dedicated a whole bunch of babies the other night, and every one of them, when we put oil on their heads, the peace of God went all over them. Babies. Children. <laughs> Ephesians 1, let's get to see how thankful you really are. Believe me, he's setting you up here. Stay in Ephesians 1. I'm going to be there for a bit. 1 to 13. I reversed the order on this. In 13 and 14. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the guarantee of our inheritance, until the redemption of what? The purchased possession to the praise of His glory. Are you thankful that you've been born paid for? Yeah. yeah. Most people aren't. I've asked questions that. I've asked Christians that. What do you mean? I said you're not your own. You're really not your own. Because when God buys you, it's a, non it's, it's a binding contract that can't be negotiated every three years. <laughs> it's not a union deal. <laughs> That isn't okay. Let's add some addendums to this. No, 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 no. First Corinthians, you've been bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body. You're not a vessel for dishonor, but a vessel for honor. Amen. God wants us to be Christians of integrity and holiness and righteousness. We're to speak different, walk different, talk different. We're supposed to walk the way Jesus walked and not let a mountain stand in your way. The reason we don't is because we don't realize who we are. When you're empowered with God, you've been given all power and authority that the Son had. All power and authority was given to the Son. He says, here, I give it to you. When I said that the other night at the church, I said, stop climbing mountains. Tell them to get out of your way. Yeah. We're Christians. we got victory. It says in Genesis, the whole earth has to obey our voice. Because Jesus gave us back what they lost in the garden. He gave us dominion back over all the powers of the universe. Over everything. We've been given victory. Amen. The problem is, until you find out who you're really owned by, and in that ownership by Him, the authority He's given you. He's given you the authority never to bow to this world ever again. No Christian should ever go, well, I just got to go along with the flow. Really, what for? Why? Jesus says not to. He disrupted everybody everywhere he went. Every word he spoke convicted people. When you speak, the devil should tremble. Do you realize that? When you lift up this word and you know the authority the Son of God has given you, every demon should run from you. They should, they'll run. When you know who you are and you know who you're owned by and you know that he crushed him, took the keys back, gave them back to us. The power and the authority of all of heaven and creation is now inside of you. That's the power of this word. You'll start speaking the word at darkness, and it will run. Because when you know who you are, like those demons following us to town the other night, it was funny. Because they're, they're about yeah, 40, 50 yards behind the SUV. She's reading the Bible. Got worship music on. Yeah, really come a little closer so those angels can spank you one. <laughs> because I know who I am. They can't touch. I'm off limits because I belong to Jesus. I'm blood bought. There's no sin in here on me because I'm washed. I'm clean. God doesn't keep a record. Start telling the devil you don't have a record. Tell him to keep his mouth shut. Take his lies somewhere else because he's not even allowed to lie to you unless you give him permission. <laughs> now, if you let him get up and start reminding you of stuff, say, remind him of what Jesus did over 2,000 years ago to him. 
See, he wants to convince Christians today that he still has authority in your life. He does if you open the door. But if not, he's under your feet. Speak this at him. Stop struggling. Stop striving with things. And start speaking your life into existence. Because God gave you that authority. He doesn't watch you walk around, well, I just got to accept it. No, you don't. You know what I accept? Jesus is Lord and he's overcome everything in the universe. He's going to provide everything I need. He's going to forgive all my sins, heal all my diseases. I'm already preaching the end of the sermon. Okay, let's go. So much for my study. Amen. Oh, he did it Thursday night. What did he throw me a singer? Bob just put the paper down. He changed the whole thing Thursday. That same chapter. Now are you thankful? Verse 3. You are blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Are you thankful that you can walk in victory in the power of the Holy Spirit, the fullness of Christ? What he says is in the, in the heavenly places, what Jesus is saying is, if you walk in the spiritual realm with him, there's no darkness allowed in him. <coughs> the Holy Spirit is holy. The Holy Spirit is holy. And God's holiness, no darkness can touch him. And if you're in him and he's in you, there's no darkness allowed there. That's walking in the heavenlies with Christ. Knowing that everything of man is subdued under your feet. That's walking above things in Jesus. doesn't make us better. It just makes us wiser Christians to know who we are. People see how you walk. They'll know how, by the way, you talk if you really have a relationship with God. They're going to know if you spent time reading the Word of God. That's why it's, the more you renew your mind with the Word, the stronger your heart gets. Do you know that? You'll add years to your life and health to your flesh. It says, though, the Word of God is health to your flesh and Amen. strength to your bones. Thank you, Jesus. Health to your flesh. The more you meditate on this Word, it's going to go in here. From here, it goes to here. And once your heart believes something, nobody can steal that from you. No lying voice can steal that from you. Because now it's in your heart. And the more you read this, the more this will go into your heart and push out what's not of God. That's why it says renew your mind. It doesn't say renew your heart. He'll do the heart part. He'll circumcise your heart with the Holy Spirit. But the more you read this, the Holy Spirit will go down to here and make your heart one with His heart. So your desires and His desires are truly one. Remember some His desires for you are holy and perfect, and they're a lot bigger than anything you can even think about. Because He's bigger than your thoughts. He's bigger than how you see life. And He's above that because He wants to do that much more with you. The reason most Christians don't get used in a mighty way by His Spirit is because they put limitations on God. They stay down here. No, 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 no. no, no. I want the seas to part. I want the ground to shake. I want the heavens to thunder. He parted the skies for us at the tent revival so we didn't get rained on. So we weren't walking around in all that mud out there with the poof dirt. Because <laughs> that would have been fun. I'd have really been washing a lot of feet that night. Whoa, Jesus. Whoa, we had... <laughs> What would be good for the water baptism? Stick them outside the tent, they get all drenched, pull them back in. But you see what I'm saying? He, he parted the heavens that night because we prayed and believed, God, you called this tent revival. You don't want us all walking around. We're here to wash feet, not create a field full of mud. You will protect us. Guess what? He honored that. And Paul got blessed coming towards it. He got to say, wow, look at that over the tent. So what a blessing. He used everybody. See how he used it? Paul gives testimony by having a phone don't click. See what God did? Amen. He proved. Here I am. Let me move the heavens for you. Don't say God doesn't move the heavens for you. Yes, He will. Because if you give God permission to take you somewhere, guess what? He'll move that mountain. He'll make a road in the wilderness, a river in the desert. He can do anything because He's God Almighty. That's who you belong to today. Amen. Verse 4. He chose you before the foundation of the world that you would be holy without blame before Him in love. You were chosen to be here today before He made the universe. I got everybody quiet. He chose you to be here today before He made the stars, the sun, and the moon, and the earth. He knew you by name and He hadn't even named the stars yet. He knew you all by name. It says so in Psalm 139. He chose you. One of the things we talked about the other night was, you have been saved for a time such as this. Everybody wanted to be born in a different time. The 
greatest move of God's about to arise in the whole earth. Billions of people are going to get saved and set free. The Lord wants his banquet table in heaven full. He wants nothing in hell. That was made for Satan and his demons when they rose up in pride against the Holy God. It wasn't made for people. The church needs to go back to its foundational teachings. Let's go find the lost and bring them into the kingdom of God. Amen. Let's put our lives aside. We're not the issue because he's going to take care of us. Forget to be taken care of part. He's got that. Get the part we're just supposed to be doing in this kingdom of God of his. Because you belong to a kingdom oh, we talked about which cannot be shaken. We belong to a kingdom that's a consuming fire. His fire will go before you and he'll be your rear guard. You need to go out and start taking Jesus to people again because you're not thankful that you're saved. So you keep your salvation to yourself. We can never keep salvation to ourselves. It's a free gift that we're to share. It's a Christmas gift that keeps giving and giving and giving and giving and giving and giving. Because His love never ends, never ends, never ends. Why don't we go back to loving the lost again like we should, amen? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Mm. My drinking problem. <clears throat> <laughs> Verse 5, you are predestined. What a word from the Father to all of us through His Son. We were predestined to be adopted as sons by Jesus Christ to Himself. It's even better than that. It was His good pleasure and His will to do that. And then He made us accepted in His beloved Son. You're all beloved children of Almighty God. Are we thankful yet? We're beloved because of what Jesus did. We're beloved because of what Jesus did. How can we not have a thankful heart every day we wake up? God, I'm your beloved. I'm made in your image. I'm your beloved. You predestined me. You chose me. You set me aside for a time such as this. How can we not get up and thank him for that? How can we not? It's going to get better here. Mm. Verse 7, in whom you have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of your sins. Are you thankful yet? Oh, or are you yeah. still carrying your sins with you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody comes up and tells you as a Christian, you know I used to, they've never forgiven themselves. You know why you were made in his holy image? So you never have to look back. Because when you receive the blood of the cross of Jesus Christ, there is nothing here. There's nothing standing behind you. Nothing. There was a brother that came up for prayer the other night, and I could see he was struggling with it. When you come from the streets, it's easy to see those that, that had a rough edge. <laughs> I'll leave it there. But I could see he was carrying this stuff on his back because he was like this strong guy. And he'd come up, I put my hand on his head, and the love of Jesus touched him. Just touch this man. He softened. He just softened when Jesus touched him. I said, brother, forgive yourself right here, right now. And let Jesus' blood take care of that. Don't ever look over your shoulder again. And he just wept. It was so beautiful because he really finally just came up there and he forgave himself. I said, God forgave you when, when you repented years ago. You're not to carry that with you. It's not part of you. That was your old nature. That was your old man. He's been buried with Christ. You've been risen with Christ. You're a new creation. You're made whole. You're forgiven. You're redeemed. You're set free from where you've been in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. God is so good. Are we thankful yet? Are we thankful yet? Are we thankful yet? We thankful yet? Psalm 103. this here, the, it was it yesterday early morning, um, I went, okay, we've done this before. He said, no, they forget my words. They say them, but they're not saying them with a thankful heart. It changes when you're thankful. When, you're, when you read the Word of God and you become thankful for every promise in you that just said amen in Christ, 
It takes on a new meaning. That's why I've read some scriptures 20, 30, 40 times. It was that next time he told me to read it that it came alive. Because I go, we're reading this again? I've learned not to ask that anymore because usually I get up. <clears throat> and then when he goes to I am, then you're in trouble. Um, but then there's certain times in your life where certain scriptures are going to come alive. And they're going to speak right to your spirit, right to your heart. He didn't want you to see it then. That's all it is. Because the Word of God, He'll reveal it to you day by day by day by day. He opens up the Word of God by His Holy Spirit to you. So it enriches you, so it renews you, so it restores you. It says the law of the Lord, His teachings, the Word of God will restore your soul. It will mend a broken heart. Amen. That's the love of Christ written in the words. Amen? Amen. Amen. And it says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Do you bless the Lord with everything in your inner being? Everything that's inside of you? Because if you're not thankful, you will not. If you're not thankful that you're saved and born again and on your way to eternal glory, Amen. you will not bless the Lord with all your soul. You. David always cried out from his soul, that inner man, because he knew in here his only hope was in God. He knew it in a deep way, and so did Paul. That's why they said in and of themselves they had no good thing dwelling but God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And forget not all His benefits. These are just a few of them. Who forgives all your iniquities. Who heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. He crowns you with it. You get a crown of it. Oh, God. Who satisfies your mouth with good things. So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. In verse 12 in that same psalm. As far as the east is from the west. So far as he removed our transgressions from us. Are we thankful yet? Amen. Are we thankful Amen. yet? Amen. You go to Isaiah 43, 25. He says, for my name's sake, as his name is holy. I remember your sins no more. 1 John 1, 9. Confess your sins to me and I will cleanse you of all unrighteousness. He remembers your sins no more. He's going to crown you. When you got born again, He put a crown on you of loving kindness and tender mercies from heaven. That's what God gave you. Oh, hallelujah. Wear your crown. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for the crown. Hallelujah. And you men that are married, you got a second crown. You got your wife. How does that make you feel? Cool. She's your crown. <laughs> I remember, I was, I read that before and didn't really notice it. It was a while back. The Lord was changing us. My wife gone through a lot of changes. And I've been seeing her in a different way after 13 and a half years because I see her more than ever through God's eyes. And I read that one day. And I come walking out to us and honey, I found out something. It came alive that day off the page. God showed me the significance of it. It says, my wife is my crown from God. Yeah. Oh, wow. If men of God would learn that one, Boy, would they be thankful they got the wife they have. Amen. Are you thankful yet? Amen. Are you thankful yet? Amen. That's good. Matthew 27. This is Jesus on the cross. He's about to take his final breath. Jesus cried out again with a loud voice, yielded up his spirit. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn from top to bottom. The earth quaked. The rocks were split. The graves were open, and many of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the Holy Spirit, the Holy City, and appeared to many. When the veil was torn, you have access to go sit on your father's lap 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You don't have to wait for somebody to sacrifice an animal, and he alone gets to go into the Holy of Holies. We do because the veil was torn. 
There's no more veil over the throne room of God. It is wide open because he, Jesus made a doorway right into the presence of the Holy of Holies, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. You can go to your Father 24 hours a day and say, Abba, Father, here I am. I want to sit on your lap. And you know what he'll do? He'll cover you. You'll feel a presence from heaven you've never known. I told you, that Thursday night, they were breathing the air of Christ. His presence was so thick in a building, they were breathing it in and getting set free. Amen. That's how much God loves us. I was doing this after I prayed for some of them. I said, just breathe, because they were doubled over in pain. A lot of emotional healing went on that night. That's why it was so draining, spiritually. But what happened is I said, I said, start breathing. Start breathing. And everybody extended their hands and they were praying. And when, they, and when they would come up, all you saw was God's glory on their face and they were smiling. And whatever pain they were carrying was gone. Jesus did such a great work that day, it was unbelievable. He loves us so much. You know, he hates to see anybody in pain. Oh, Spiritual, man. mental, emotional, oh, physical. Jesus. That's why it said in Psalm 103, he'll heal all your diseases, not some of them. He doesn't say, I'll forgive some of your sins. He says, I'm going to deal with all of them. He dealt with all of mankind's humanity in one moment's time. When he took his last breath. He broke the power of the sin to judge you, to condemn you, to keep you in prison. Yes. Sin will keep you in prison until you know what he did. Until you know you're truly forgiven, then you can look in the mirror and say, I'm forgiven. I'm a new creation. I'm made in the image of God. There is no darkness in you and you're in me. There's no room for darkness in this vessel. It can't stay here because I got the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ in me and so do all of you. Sin has no place to reside in here. It doesn't have a foothold. And it won't when you let the fire of God burn out your old nature so God's nature fills you up from head to toe. Because it can't hold on to what's holy because He's holy. You have a holy God in you. He made you holy when you received Him. It's not any goodness of yourself or holiness of yourself. Please stop trying to earn something you can't get. <laughs> he alone came into this earth as a man sinless and pure and holy. Are we thankful yet? Oh, we're thankful for Jesus yet. Amen. This is just some Hallelujah. of what He's done for us. I don't have that many hours left here on the planet. Because we could go on a thankful list. <laughs> it goes etc., 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 and then keeps going. And then keeps going. It's the Ever Ready Bunny battery. It'll just keep going. Because there are no... We don't have enough time to thank Him for how good He is. We don't. We don't have enough. But what we can do to thank Him, say, Lord, here I am. Use me for Your glory. Amen. Amen. Fill me with the power of Your love, Your mercy, Your compassion, Your understanding, so I go out into this dark world and bring light. So I go out and make an impact in people's lives so that they see Christ in us and the hope of glory in us. And then they will ears will be open because they're going to see something that didn't come from You. They're going to see that man didn't change you. They're going to see God's in you. And they're going to see that. And they're going to be drawn to that. And then you're going to love on them. You're going to care for them. You're going to pray for them. You're going to edify them. And say, here, let me show you the guy that's going to fix everything for you. You take him right into the arms of Jesus. We need to make an impact again. The church has forgot about making an impact. Hallelujah. I don't want to hear about programs. I don't want to hear about any of this stuff. Everybody's got all these million things you got to do. No, what we got to do is take that book out to people. Remember, some of that book's alive in you from Genesis to Revelation and all the full. The living word moved into you. The living word moved into you. And once you realize the power of this living word Hallelujah. that spoke the universe into existence, this is in you. So when you speak, I said that Thursday night, and a bunch of them looked at me and went, what? I said, don't have the faith in Jesus anymore. Have the faith of Jesus. Have the faith of Jesus. He's given you His face. That's that mustard seed you got. You all got a mustard seed. You know what that is? It's the living Word of God. And it's not going to grow and bear fruit unless you feed it the Word of God and say, God, here I am. Feed me with more of you so I can go out and speak this Word the way you've called me to with authority and power. He said Jesus spoke with authority. They were amazed because he wasn't man taught. He was taught by his father. Mm -hmm. That's right. 
He says, where did he learn this stuff having never studied? Your teacher lives inside of you. You should be speaking every way you go with authority in who you are in Christ. Thank you, oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. And once you start speaking like that, like I said, every demon in hell will tremble at your presence. You know the devil should shake when you walk? Yes. He should tremble because you know who you are. Amen. Do you realize Satan himself can pop his head in that door and I'll say good morning and in the name of Jesus. You know what he has to do? He has to bow because I know the name of Jesus. There's nothing above him. Nothing. Yes. It says everything bows yes. at the name of Jesus. That's the devil. That's yes. sickness. That's poverty. That's lack. That's discouragement. That's depression. That's anything else this world can throw at you. His name is above it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. His name is above it. Are we thankful yet? Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now I got a needle. I got a food needle. Texas thing back. What's up with that? <laughs> now, if you're thankful, and you're truly thankful, like I said, we can talk about what we need to be thankful for, but we don't have that many days left on the planet. Don't know when he's coming back. That's not my business. My business is to get about my father's business every day. The days we're going to come into, heads up, you're going to hear all these people with their formulas when he's getting here. I was on the computer, I was looking up some Christian website, and at the bottom I see, our soon coming king, so get ready, get out of it. Where did these nutcases come from? And Jesus says, remember what I said. They're going to come and say they're me, and they're going to say I'm coming back three weeks from now. He warns us that they're coming. Any Christian comes to you and tells you they know when he's coming, rebuke them and say, get thee behind me, Satan, because you don't know God. Because they don't, because it says so, if we read the Bible... It would say, no one knows but the Father. So stop worrying about when He's getting here. You know what you miss out on? What He wants to do with you today. Yes. Not tomorrow morning. Right here, right now. He wants to do something with you now. He wants to restore your soul to wholeness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Your eternal glory awaits you. That's a done deal. Your name's in the Lamb's Book of Life, and nobody can take that away. Yeah. No one can take your eternal destiny. The Bible we just read, you are sealed. You are sealed for the day of salvation when we really get our, our real suits on. When it tells us we got human suits, we got a better suit coming though. Mm -hmm. And that's a good way to put it. That's a because these are human suits. But what they are, they're temples of the most holy God. But we're gonna get a real body. And it'll be soon enough. It'll be soon enough. But we're not going yet. And if you keep complaining about how long you're gonna be here, I'll pray to God keep you here even longer. <laughs> I'm not going to go through this by myself. What are you, Grace? I need help. <laughs> we got to do it together as a family. Because in numbers, there's power. There's oneness. That's where God arises in His Spirit. Because if people walk in that door, say some lost souls come in here right now. Dirty, come out of the streets, haven't eaten in a few days. If any of us look at them and judge them and don't love them, they turn around, they may never get saved. We better turn around and hug them and feed them and take care of them. Because that's what that's what Jesus would do. See, the church needs to go back to what's important. There's billions of lost souls on the planet. But they need to walk in and feel the love of Jesus in a house. Because if they don't feel his love, they can get the rejection and the judgments out there. They get it every day. They already think they're worthless anyway. But God does not think they're worthless. They were made in his image. Remember something. Put on a clean pair of clothes on them. Give them a bath and a shower and some food. Then you wouldn't look at them as a lost soul. You'd say, well, they're okay. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Because all this doesn't matter. It's what's in here that matters. Because it's only in the heart. They are lost souls. They need one moment's time with Jesus and their whole life can be transformed. Amen. That's up to us to tell them, you don't have to live like this anymore. You're hopeless, but let me give you to the God of all hope that can come and change your circumstances. Hallelujah. He made the world. He can do anything for you in Jesus' name. Right. Mm. Now that you're all thankful, you're all excited. God wants to know why you're not hungry. Yesterday afternoon, 
I'm getting all this thankful stuff. And then he goes, now ask them why they don't hunger for me. Why everything in their inner being doesn't thirst for me. Why do they now long for me? Because if they were thankful who they are in me, who created them, who owns them, who bought them, who washed them with, their blood, with his blood, who sealed with the Holy Spirit, who says now your name's in the Lamb's Book of Life, if they were thankful for all that I have done freely, I ask nothing in return other than you love me and follow me. And I'll give you the grace and the Spirit to do it. I won't leave you by yourself. He says, why are they not hungry? And I said, it's potluck tomorrow. <laughs> See what I'm saying though? When you got up this morning, you should hunger for Jesus. You should crave and desire. Um, it's like uh, David talked about longing. That word longing. It's like, <clears throat> but the thing is, it's got to be from in here. It's, it can't just be a bunch of, oh, God, I long for you. He's going to go, come back when you're real. Yeah. Yeah. Stop, I know, I know you too well. Because he's going to know if it's from in here. When you read the Psalms, read how many day, times David speaks about from in here. My soul longs for thee, O Lord. My expectation is in thee. I need you, O God. You're my strength. You're my fortress. You're my high tower. He never said that about any man, David. It was about the Lord. Amen. It was about Thank the Lord. Jesus. Matthew 6. These verses take on a whole new meaning right now. They really do. 31 to 33. Therefore, do not worry saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. When you already know that God says, I'm going to supply all that you need, why aren't you seeking Him first? He'll never cast you away. The Bible says that. No one can take you out of, out of the Father's hands. The Bible says that. The Bible says He's going to guard you out and coming in. The Bible says even in the days of famine, you will eat in plenty. The Word says that. See, when you know more of the Word. So whatever the world tells you, it means nothing. It means nothing. If God is for you, what can man do to you? Hello? He can't do it. Because all the promises are yes and amen. So if you're, not, if you're focused on worrying about what you're going to wear tomorrow morning for your job, or what you're going to eat on Tuesday afternoon, if you're already concerned about your tomorrows, then you don't trust Him today. If you're worried about the end of the month, and it's only potluck, obviously God's going to supply what we need. <laughs> Hello? we got enough food for 100 people over there. Um... See what I'm saying? God knows what you need. He'll supply your need. You start hungering and thirsting for His kingdom and His righteousness first, above all else. And you'll see that you'll never have another need. Your sustenance for life is found in Christ Jesus in Corinthians. Your sustenance means your food, your shelter, your clothing, your finances, your health, your joy, your peace, your wisdom, your intelligence, your discernment. All that you need, He's going to do. But He wants you to hunger and thirst for the kingdom that has no end. For a kingdom that can never be shaken. For a kingdom that is an eternal kingdom that can never be brought low. Amen. Amen. Now, are you thankful? And now, do you have a real hunger? Because if you have a hunger, I'll be honest with you. The devil can't even lie to you in there. He can't even hinder you, because that means your focus is on the bread of life, the door of sustenance. 
that tore the veil in two and gave you access into the throne room of God. You don't have to go through any minister. You don't have to come to a ministry building. I don't care where you are or what you're doing. Guess what? He's there. Come to Him and hunger for His presence and He'll meet you right where you are. In Jesus' name, because He is faithful. Oh, hallelujah. Let's talk about my buddy David. Hmm. We're right there. I know you're looking at the crock pots. I can... yeah. Everybody's nose is starts to sniff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's all good. It's good. You know what? This is what it's about. Because in the book of Acts, they got together. You know what they did? They sang. They worshipped. They broke bread. They fellowshiped in the Holy Ghost. And they always ended with food. How about that? We're following the pattern of God, how God set the church up. Amen. We worship, we pray, we preach the word, we invited God to come in and take us over. We, we're together in the name of Jesus. He's in the house. And then you fellowship with that, with your first hunger. Your first hunger should be Jesus. Hallelujah. Psalm 63, 1 through 3. Now this is David in the wilderness of Judah, hiding from his enemies. You'll notice David never cried out for man. To Never even cried out for man's presence. Because there's days when you do feel all alone. There's days when you feel abandoned. Sometimes God will pull back a little to see if you're going to hunger for what satisfies your soul. Because if you get too complacent with God and you get too comfy, you're in the recliner too much, which is understandable in these days. I can understand that. The recliners we got, they're real comfy. I don't sit there too long because I can wait too comfortable. It's nap time, man. Mm. But here's a man hiding from his enemies in the wilderness of Judah, running in and out of caves. So what does David do? You are, in verses 1 to 3 in Psalm 63, You are my God. Early I will seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Oh, because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips will praise you. Here's a man hiding in the wilderness from his enemies. It's dry, he is thirsty. But who does he go to? His best friend. The God of loving kindness and tender mercies. See, because he knew God, they had a rock in the wilderness and it became a river. They had water to drink. That rock was Christ Jesus. He's a fountain that never goes dry. His water never runs out. Because he is from before and after it was all made. He's eternal. His river never stops flowing. So who did David go to? He cried out to the God of loving kindness and tender mercies. He cried out to God. Not one mention of man there. He sought God to refresh and replenish and to take away that loneliness and abandonment he feel, felt because he knew God would come hold him and comfort him. Amen. God wants to wrap his arms around all of you today. You need to let him. There is no shame in Christ Jesus. There's no guilt and condemnation in Christ Jesus. None. Zero zip. Not a zilch. Let your Father hug you today. That's His desire. Come unto me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's how good our God is. Hunger and thirst for Christ, and you'll never be thirsty. Because He'll always refresh you. It says, water, and I'll reward you. You notice it doesn't say go to man for the water. It says go out and water. That means go out and spread the gospel. Lead the lost into the kingdom. And then it says right after that, when you're watering... He will reward you. Even there in the Proverbs, it's telling you, don't go to man for your nourishment and for water. It comes from heaven. The resource of life, the abundant life, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, financially, the blessed life from heaven is going to come from heaven. It's not going to come out there. God owns everything out there. He owns everything on this planet and everything in it. He owns all the stars, the sun, and the moon. He owns the fish and the sea. And believe me something, go back and read the, when he broke the loaves and the fish. It was five and four thousand, but no, it was more like between, it was more like twenty thousand each time. Because he said the men. Go back and read that. He said men. Men always came first. 
Women and children came after that. But he fed them all. They always follow. So there was a whole lot more people there than 5,000 the one time and 4,000 the next. But by the time he got to the next miracle, they'd already forgotten what he'd just done. Yes. <laughs> just like us. I'm going to close with Psalm 42. As a deer pants for water, the water brook so my so pants my soul. See, the soul again, inside. Oh God, my soul thirsts for the living God. When shall I come and appear before you? You're going to appear before God in due time. What you allow God to do with you while you're here is how many out boys you're going to get when you get home. Don't take your salvation for granted and then God can do something. Have a thankful heart and then God will raise you up to do a mighty work. And like I said, He's going to call you to stuff you can't do. He called me to something I, I had no idea where to even begin. I was real good at evangelizing. I was real good out in the streets. I came from there. Well, when he said that full-time pastor thing, I went, oh, no, you don't. <laughs> no, no, and no. But I found out what we talked about before. I'm a purchased possession, and I have no rights. Amen. I have a free will, and I suggest you don't exercise it. Because there's always a correction. <laughs> yeah, I got all that close. Yeah, we'll leave that one. Um... But God wants to do so much more with you than you can imagine. It's you allowing Him to really have you. Because when you lose hope in yourself, go back and study David, go back and study Paul. They both said the same thing. I have no good but thee. They knew their goodness, their strength, their life was in Christ. It wasn't anywhere else. Their only hope was in God to be their everything. And when you get there, you've truly given up hope in you. And then this Bible will come alive like never before. Then when, you're, when you don't sit there and, and try and even analyze it. When I first got saved, I was reading, reading, reading. I didn't learn much. Finally the hand came. This isn't school. Let me teach you now. Let me turn me. The Holy Spirit will teach you all things. The anointing that lives in you, that's God. He'll teach you all things. He said, if you'd let me teach you what this says, you'd be a whole lot better off. Because when it's something new, you want to get as much of I hungered so much for him. But I actually went over the edge because I was trying to download stuff that, first of all, I was a baby Christian, couldn't understand anyway. It takes time. One thing beautiful about the Bible, one of the many things, it comes alive more every day. It's so rich. Every time you turn the pages, the Spirit will reveal new truths to you. But when He's doing that, that goes into you. That enriches your spirit, man. It says, strengthen the man within. You strengthen the man within with the Word of God, feeding it into your spirit. So it is time for us, if we're truly thankful, you'll truly desire the bread of life only. You'll desire Him. Because once you desire Him above all else, Everything in your life will fall into divine order according to that book of promise. There'll never be a day where you have to go without. He may tell you to go a couple days without food. It happens. I found out that this week, though, I was on a fast for a couple days. I thought he was getting me ready for Thursday. I get home Thursday afternoon. Then I got a real zinger. Because it's usually always three days. He says, no, no, no. Get some lean carbs and get some chicken breast meat. And he mixed some carbs and proteins with a protein drink with some vitamin juice and stuff. And I went, eat. I said, wait a minute. He said, you're going to need your strength tonight. And I went, uh-oh. You didn't tell me that part. <laughs> but you see, he put nourishment back in because he got what he wanted the first two days. In those two days, he gave me the message for Thursday night. See, there's always a divine plan. And when God says, here, do it, just do it. Whatever it is, do it. Say, I can't. As soon as you say, I can't, thank you, Jesus. Because He doesn't want you to be able to do anything apart from Him. That's good. See, if you do something apart from Him, it didn't bring Him glory. 
In John 15, it says, apart from me, you can do nothing. You all have God-given natural abilities to do things. You have skill sets. Everybody's born with them. Whatever it is, give the skill sets back to your king so he can use those skill sets for his glory. It's for him alone that you were born. It should be for him alone that you live. Because if you live for another other than Jesus Christ, you're not thankful that he died and he rose again. Oh, hallelujah. You should have seen it the other day. He had her hand on my shoulder with a bottle of oil and they're feeding me water because it went on for four hours. When he said thank when he started giving me scriptures, I said, they'll be here till next Friday. We're not going home, so they'll be doing sleeping bag. Because there's so much to be thankful for. We should be thankful that we have a roof over our head. We have a bed to sleep in. We have a family here. A family of love, united in the Holy Spirit. Everybody got here safely today. That was my, one of my prayers this morning. Lord, bring everybody here that's hungry for you. Get them here safely so we can unite as a family of one. Melissa went to Texas to see her family, her natural family. But she missed her spiritual family. You see, when God connects people, He does it for a reason. That so blessed me when I heard that. Because that's what a united family in Christ is supposed to be. We should feel one another. When somebody has a need, it should be met best we can. That's what the body of Christ, that's what the church should represent. God's right in the middle of the church. He's the resource of everything we need. And we should always go to Him for everything. And if you're hungering for Him, you will become a blessing. Because He'll pour blessings in you you can't contain. And you'll be giving them out. That's what the church was like. And that's what it's supposed to be like now. Let's not worry about how things are going to happen. Let's trust Jesus to make them happen. Because it's all about Him. It's all about him. There's a move of God happening right here in this little town. Even when we went to Vegas, it was like, Pahrump. <laughs> well, I brought them some fire from Pahrump. They thought they had fire there. We brought them some Pahrump fire. Because guess what? Fire is the Holy Spirit, too. What does Pahrump mean? Water off. The Holy Spirit. I took everything that this valley's built on, God's water, and we took it to Vegas the other night. Now we have a oneness with an entire ministry there. Okay? And also that ministry goes to Chicago, and they have an office in Georgia. I got a call Friday afternoon from Georgia from a woman I've been on the phone with. I'm going to see her next Saturday. She said, Dennis, I just praise you and thank you for showing up in Las Vegas. She had calls all morning from Las Vegas, what God did in that house. The presence of the Lord and all the people he touched that night. See God, isn't he? <clears throat> See what I mean when you're bold in your faith? People take notice. Love Jesus above all else and it will change lives. Because things are changing in the world like never before. You need to allow God to take everything that you have that's of you and remove it. So all of him can come out and set the captives free. He's waiting for us. He's already done his part. He went to the cross and rose again. Let's become thankful children.
and let the Father raise us up in all of His power and glory so we can go out and change this world in Jesus' name. Because that's what the church was created to do. Amen? Amen. 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 Hmm. Heavenly Father, you sent your Son to that cross, not just for sins, there was so much more. But you created that cross so that when he was nailed to the cross and he said, it is finished, O God, it broke the enmity between man and God. But not just that, between the Gentile and the Jew, so the two could become one new man. We thank you this day that we're united with your children, Israel. We thank you for the peace of Jerusalem. We thank you that Jerusalem remained forevermore the capital of Israel. And no one can touch that city because it belongs to you. You've established it as such. But Lord, let the unity of the cross and the power of it unite the body of Christ like never before. Bring us all back together as a family of one in the unity and the bond of love and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Father, tell everybody that runs a ministry that the walls need to come down because there is no division in the body of Christ. There may be different buildings, but there's one cross, one Lord, one God, one faith, one Savior, one Holy Spirit that can unite us, O oh God. We thank you this day there's a move afoot in every ministry, tearing their walls down, going back out to be a family of one. Oh Lord Jesus, arise today. In the heavens and the earth, let the earth shake before thy presence. Walk among us like never before. Lord, it's time for the blind to see, the lame to walk, the deaf to hear, the dead to be raised. You said those signs and miracles and wonders would follow those who believe in the finished work of the cross. Arise, O oh God, like never before. Father, I thank you. You're taking every world leader right now, and you're crushing their hearts by thy Holy Spirit. You're bringing them to their knees to see the darkness they live in. It's time to turn to the light of hope. Jesus Christ, Father, arise in power and glory. Shake the heavens. You said the heavens are going to shake. You said the earth is going to shake. And people are going to tremble at the presence of God. Let it begin right here, right now, in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. 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 God, there's nothing impossible for you. I pray for the salvation of every human being on this planet right now. Visit them with the power of the cross and your mighty grace, O oh God. Father, just bless this time. Let your face shine on everybody in here. Let your grace, your peace, your mercy, your presence consume us. Bless this food. Let it nourish us because we are the temples of God, the body of Christ. Keep us healthy, strong, fresh, and flourishing all the days of our life to lift up the most holy name that's above every name, the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.